If you've ever used a social network, you've probably seen your name or your username on many different pages, or sometimes you see your username a whole bunch of times on one page. For example, when I log into Facebook, I'm asked what's on my mind with my profile picture and my name in the box. At the top right of the page, I'm also able to go back to like my home page, and once again I see my profile picture and my first name up there. And on the same page on the left hand sidebar, my name is on top of a plethora of options and pages to choose from. Have you ever played a game that asked you for your name once and then referred to you by that name every time afterwards? A lot of video games do this. Mario Kart allows me to choose my previously created character and then I can see my name on the leaderboards when I win. Because I always win, obviously. By the end of this video, you're going to learn how to greet a player by their name in the same way, in your own program, using Snap. If it's the user's first time using your program, it'll say nice to meet you, but if they've used your program before, it will welcome them back by their first name. We're going to learn some more advanced topics in this video that will level up your coding skills, so make sure to pause and take many notes as we go through this video. The instructions are written in Unit 1, Lab 2, Page 4, Learning Player Names. They do start you off with a starter project that you can load by clicking right there. All of the blocks that you'll need are already here. We're just going to have to figure out how to use them. Let's make our stage a little bit bigger just so that it's more visible when we do run this. In order to greet a player, we first have to ask them for their name. We can use the ask and wait command block to do this. When a user enters their name, we have to figure out a way to check if it's already in the list. And if it is, we can then say welcome back. Otherwise, if it's not, then we're going to have to store that new name in our list of names. To perform this check, we're going to use a conditional block called if else. Conditionals control the code based on whether or not a condition inside of them is true or false. Kind of like when you're young and your parents say if you finish your homework, then you can do something. Conditionals check to see if a condition is true, at which point they'll perform an action. And if the condition isn't true, they'll do something else. The if and if else blocks are conditionals. The statement to the right of the if is what's going to be checked to determine what to do. Now right now, our conditional is empty. So it says if, and then there's this little hexagon shape right in our block, but it isn't filled with anything yet. In the scripting area, we do have a block that does fit right next to that if, quite nicely. Player list contains answer. So if I drag that inside of the conditional, now what this is saying is that we're going to ask the user for their name and if the player list contains the answer, so that means that if the person's response or, or their name is actually in this player list, then we should say nice to see you again, comma, and then the person's name. So I'm going to drag up the say block into the first part of this conditional statement. Else means otherwise, so if the name that the person typed in is not found in the list, we should do something else. It would make sense to take the input that the person typed in, which right now is currently stored in that reporter block that looks like an answer, and what we want to do is we want to add answer to player list. And then we have one final block that we can attach, which is say, join hi answer nice to meet you, which means that when the person types in their name, it'll say hello and then their name, nice to meet you, for two seconds. Because the order of this code matters, we are performing something called sequencing, without even realizing it. Algorithms or procedures are highly dependent on sequencing. Imagine you write an algorithm or a procedure for a five-year-old so that they can tie their shoes. If you have place sock on foot after place foot in shoe, the sequence will be completely off, and I don't even want to think about what will happen when the kid tries to follow those instructions. So every time you're coding, you need to be sure that the sequence of your code and the conditionals are logical and they make sense. We can test and debug our script by showing the player list variable, which contains all the names. Now right now it's currently on the screen, but if for some reason your player list isn't showing, you can go into the variables palette and make sure that player list is checked off. Because if it's unchecked, you're not going to be able to see it on the stage. This is very useful when you're debugging variables and the values of these variables. Finally, in our instructions, it says to create a greet player command block and then drag in our working script. 
First, I want to make sure that this script works. So I'm going to click on it to actually start running it, and it asks me what's my name. So I'm going to type in Mr. G. It says, hi, Mr. G, nice to meet you. Now, if you look at the player list, Mr. G is now on this list. It just got added to this list. So if I run this program again, and I type in Mr. G, it says, nice to see you again, Mr. G. And if I run it again, and I type in some random name like Dave, it says, hi, Dave, nice to meet you. And it adds Dave to the list. So our code is working correctly. Now we can throw all of this into a new block that we're about to create, which is greet player. And let's put that in the sensing command block palette. So when we hit make block and we create a name, we can then drag in all of our code into the block editor. And let me just expand it so you guys can see it a little bit better. And I want to hit apply and OK. And we've just created another block. So if we go to the sensing palette and scroll all the way to the bottom, you'll notice Greet Player is right here, ready to go. Make sure to save your work and congratulations. You've just completed Unit 1, Lab 2. We're really starting to touch on some really advanced concepts, so if you're understanding it, keep it up. If you're stuck or if you have any questions, post them in the comments section below so me or someone else in the community can help you out. Because everything we're building in the future is going to depend on you understanding all of these fundamentals. See you guys in the next lab.